Hello and welcome to another episode of From the Beginning here on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're continuing on to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 14. We're going to be starting in verse 15 and going through the end of the chapter. Then let's get reading it and we'll get right into this week's teaching. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them, and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front of them and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. So we see here the conclusion of what we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. We saw that the Lord had brought these plagues upon the Egyptians. He had commanded Pharaoh to let his people go. Pharaoh had said, no way. Then he finally gave in and was going to be obedient reluctantly, but in the end he was, and he sent the Israelites away. We saw that they were able to plunder the Egyptians by taking good articles of clothing and gold and silver, jewelry. They were able to leave, not just uh, taking themselves, but some wealth with them. And then all of a sudden we saw that Pharaoh changed his mind. He had his heart hardened by the Lord, and the Lord was going to, to use this, but he he was being disobedient, Pharaoh was being disobedient to the Lord, and he decided to chase after the Israelites. So he took all of his great chariots and then all the rest thrown in there as well, and they went after the Israelites. And we saw last week that the people of Israel were not super confident in their God at this moment. Even though they'd seen him do amazing things, they get very fearful, and they start asking why Moses had led them out. And, and why they couldn't just stay in Egypt and all these different complaints. And then we see that the Lord gave Moses specific instructions that he is going to take care of them. And here now we see Moses uh, has to do something. The Lord's going to have him do something very specific, raise his staff, stretch out his hand, and the, the water is going to divide so the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. And so we, we get this little download here from God. He gives very specific instructions to Moses, and he foretells what he is going to do. It's not just going to be an easy escape for the Israelites. It's going to be a complete destruction of the Egyptian army, so that, for a very specific reason, God may be glorified through this. Again, we've seen throughout the book of Exodus that this whole rescue of God's people, the Israelites, this whole bringing them out of Egypt and bringing them to their own land has been not just for them to escape, but for God to get the glory. And that's been something we've been challenged about in our own lives, to realize that God wants the glory in each of our lives, in each moment of our lives, and he's going to put us in circumstances and situations. He's going to allow things to happen in our lives, not always the things that we want to have happen, sometimes very difficult trials and struggles that we're going to have to go through, because he wants to get the glory, and it's going to lead to opportunities in our lives for him to get glory and for him to use us to 
show other people who our God is. And that certainly is the case here with this story of crossing the sea. We see that God does some amazing things. Not only does he tell Moses what he's going to do, he then actually does it. He sends his angels to protect them. The angel who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. Then he sends a pillar of cloud, moves it behind them. And so there is separation. Again, we've seen the separation constantly throughout the book of Exodus, drawing a distinction between God's people and the Egyptians, those who are following God and those who are not. Then we see that he provides for them a way to go through the sea because he provides this strong east wind, turns it into dry land, and the Israelites walk through with a wall of water on their right and a wall of water on their left. And the Egyptians get this great idea that they're going to just follow. They're going to chase down the Israelites. They think this is an easy catch. They're just going to pursue them. Yay, it's going to be fantastic. Not so much. God throws them into confusion. We see this multiple times throughout the Old Testament. God is able to send confusion upon the enemies of his people. And he is constantly protecting his people. And he is constantly drawing the distinction that we talked about between his people and those who are not his people. And, and we see that here. They have all of their wheels and the chariots are jammed. They can't get to where they want to go. So they say, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. All of a sudden, they seem to remember that this is the God who brought all these plagues upon them and that maybe they shouldn't have ran into the sea and just hoped for the best to chase after these Israelites. Clearly, now they're, they're waking up, but it's too late because the Lord instructs Moses to stretch out his hand and the waters flow back, covers the chariots, the horsemen, and the entire army of Pharaoh. It says the entire army that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. So we see that God brings about the destruction on the Egyptians that he has been talking about. He's been foreshadowing throughout the book of Exodus here. He is going to ultimately get the glory. He is going to conquer Pharaoh here. And we see that here. It says, the Israelites went through uh, the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. Gives us a, 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 says it again here at the end, as it did in the beginning. And then it goes on and says, That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. So we see that they also get a wake-up call. Not only do the Egyptians realize, oh, oh boy, the Lord is fighting for the Israelites. So now the Israelites get a wake-up call and realize who their God is and what he just did for them. And they don't just realize it, but then something else happens after that. It says, When the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord, and put their trust in him and in Moses' his servant. So we see that there's a response. God gets the glory. God shows his mighty hand. The people believe in him. They put their trust in him. They fear the Lord. So they're ready to be obedient to the Lord. And they put their trust in Moses, who was being a servant of the Lord, who was being the leader of God's people. And so we see here, there, this whole story is to give God the glory and then bring about a response. God is showing who he is to his people. And that's going to be a key thing to reflect on this passage time and time again throughout the Old Testament as we see the Israelites constantly being told to look back to what God did, specifically here in Exodus where he brought his people out of Egypt because we've seen it done in a remarkable fashion. God could have just snapped his fingers and the Israelites could have been freed from slavery and just walked all the way to the land of Canaan and God could have just let them have it for free. Everyone else walk away and their land would be theirs and it would have been a great thing. But the people wouldn't have learned anything through that. Instead, God didn't snap his fingers. He let the Israelites go through a process where they had to trust in the Lord, where they had to see him perform great signs and wonders, all those ten plagues that we saw, and we went through each one of them, and then we, we get to see how he, he could have just had them walk away with no more problems. Egypt is going to be all right. They're just going to, nope, no more slaves. We're going to move on with our lives. But no, God, again, allows situations and allows circumstances to happen that shows, once again, he is stronger and he is greater than the whole land of Egypt, than all their power, all their might, nothing compared to God. And so he allows this to happen, and Pharaoh goes, he takes his whole army, and gone. All, most powerful nation in the world just swept away in the sea. And we, and we see that God is able to just 
take down any kingdom, any power that he wants. He has that power, that might. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that the Israelites served. That is who we are trying to serve on a daily basis. And it's important for us to look at passages like this to realize just how powerful our God is. But then to realize also that that power is displayed when situations are tough, when situations are hard for us, not just in the easy moments. We want to see, most of us want to see the power of God, but we don't want to be in hard situations. This wasn't just the Israelites having a nice camp out by the sea and God did this amazing thing and just swept the, the Egyptians away. No, instead God allowed this to be a very challenging situation where the Israelites were running for their lives, trying to get out of there. It looked bleak. It looked very, very bad. The most powerful nation in the world was coming after them with chariots. These people are most likely here all on foot or certainly not on chariots. This wouldn't have looked good. It would have looked like a death trap. And yet we see how powerful God is, how he is able to do amazing things when things look hard for us, when we can't do it, and it has to be God's power. That's where he gets the glory, and so that's where he likes to operate. We see that many, many times throughout scripture. We've already seen it many times, but we're going to keep seeing it, especially here with his people as he continually shows his mighty hand and sometimes people get it and they fear the Lord like at the very end verse here and sometimes they don't get it but we see at this particular moment the the people of Israel they get it they put their fear and their trust in the Lord they knew they know who their God is at this moment and they're going to trust Moses as well and so for the moment we get to see a bright spot for the Israelites. Next week we're going to talk about the Song of Moses and Miriam, so join us next time for another episode of From the Beginning here on Heavenward Thinking.